Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and we're continuing on our exploration of the next.js framework. So basically last we left off we're just kind of playing around. We created some routes, so again we had this one route that takes you to Bob. Welcome to Bob. And if I go back to the home page, this other link took us to, well, it doesn't take us to Bob, it takes us to this page that renders a, it works. Okay, and again, see, so you can see here, see, it works, yo-yo. Okay, so then we should have a query object. We have a query object that'll store the query and the param, which we can see by just inspecting the page, Control-Shift-I. Okay, and then right there, here's that object. And I can see that my param, it works. Yo, it works. Cool. So that's neat. But what if I want to create like an API endpoint and then return information via that API? I'm not going to set up a whole like Mongo database and do all that now. You can go watch like my Express tutorial or my full TS tutorial to see an SQL database and using type ORM. All those things you could probably bring into here and use it that way with your database. But I do want to show you how you'd set up an API endpoint. And I also want to show you what happened to the head tag? Because if, if you notice, there is no index.html. Your index.js is your index.html. So what they did to deal with a lack of a head tag, so what they did is they created like a head tag component. So if you use this component head, anything you put in there will be as if you were putting it in the head tag of that page. Okay, so be aware that that's there. Okay, so if you take a look at this page, we have this head tag component, all your normal head tag tags. And then here's that nav component, okay? And that component came in here in the components folder. This is built into next. So you won't find that in the components folder. So just be aware of that. So if you wanna be able to add like bootstrap or materialized or anything through a CDN, here's technically where you would do it. Link your CSS files, all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna be in there. Okay. <clears throat> so basically creating a page using React and just setting it a nice structure for it. It's actually pretty easy with Next.js, okay? A lot of the things like routing and params and queries, as you can already see it, they make pretty easy to use. That's pretty cool. But again, APIs. A lot of times when you're using a backend server or a backend technology, the re one of the reasons you're doing it is to create microservices. So that way you can serve your front end if you decide to unpair them. So you could just sit there and, and just have it all kind of inclusive but then here's the thing what if you want to create like a mobile page okay or internet of things and you want to use that same data you'd have to create the api anyways which is why you have this sort of modern infrastructure where your front end is decoupled from your back end so that way you can have multiple front ends you have that modularity um which some people like nickname i think the jam stack um although you, so far from my experience if you ask 10 different people what the jam stack is you get 10 different answers but the basic idea is is this sort of decoupling of the front and the back. Um, that becomes a little bit more agnostic to which technologies you use on both ends. Okay, so whatever technology you use to create the microservice, the API, versus what do you do to create the front end, Angular node, I mean, Angular, Vue, JS, etc. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so API endpoints. So let's create a folder in our pages called new file not new file. Mm, where did I go? Uh, Next.js. In my pages folder, I want to create a new folder. We're going to call this API. In that new file, we'll call it test.js. Okay. And let's go back to the documentation. Okay, so basically when you're doing an, an API endpoint, I find this the basic one, here we go. I mean here it shows you how you can bring a param if you want to do parameters and all that stuff. I'm not going to do parameters, we're just going to send back an array. Based. Okay, so basically you'll do something like this, export, default, then here we have your quest response object. So if you've worked with Express before, that may look very familiar. So it has all your body and your query, all that kind of stuff you're, you're used to. Okay. So let's take out this for the moment. Okay. 
Okay. And res.n is just going to be what you send back as a response. And I'm just going to send this. I'm going to respond with. Actually, I'll just create a variable with my response array. And say string hello is it is it me your Is it me you're looking for? There's an array, and then res dot end. We're just going to return the array. Okay, so theoretically, you could just kind of like go fetch your data from over here somewhere, like if you have the database or something like that. So you can add mongoose to your library, uh, connect to it with some mo with 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 your mongoose schema and pull information and then just serve it up this way save okay and then because theoretically i guess what you could do i don't think they have a way a native way to to distinguish between get the different types of requests that i saw so let me go back and take a look real quick Quest body do we have anything regarding different types of methods here we go on scores, a lot of methods. Yes. That makes A, results pages B, yes, now I'm trying to ask. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not seeing sort of an obvious thing there. So basically I mean what you could do is like the request object. So let's this let's um Let's add the request object as part of the array. Rec. Okay, because you should be able to find the the type of request in there, and you can probably make a switch to determine your, what happens here. So you could basically create all your RESTful routes through a switch here, is what I'm imagining, but let's see what we get back. So that page was, nope, that's my portfolio website here localhost 3000 slash api slash test and let's see what it does do, 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 do. did i save i did save oh there we go internal server error wonderful okay okay so the first thing i needed to fix was I said res.end in the documentation example because it was just, it wasn't response sending anything back. But I did want to send something back. So if you ever used Express, you know that would be response.send or response.json. Um, so I did response.send and I'm sending a copy of the array. So now that works. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Okay, now let me create another object. We'll say const body equals rec dot body and let's see can I send that because I'm having a problem just sending the full request object but I am curious okay so let's see if that works what do we get back is there no request body might be null because yeah there was no request sent that's right it's just the get request so here's what we will do. Let me change that back to the array. Because again, if it was wrong, it would have said internal server error. So th that code worked out fine, res array. But what I do, I still want to see the full body object. So I'm going to console log it. Console.log rec. Save. Okay, so there's our array, but it did not want to console log 
my rack, which I'm assuming I guess must be. Oh, here we go. It's down here. Do 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 do. That's right, because it stores it its server side, so it's serving in the server console, not the browser console. Oh, you can tell I just woke up. Let's see here. That's the only one I record these videos, either when I just wake or at the very end of the day. But see, you can see here we have a very large object. This is the entire request object. Now, let's just want to get to the top of it. Because my thing is, if I wanted to create routes based on the request, I even just looked at some Git examples that they have and didn't make it super clear. So I'm assuming we could still use this head object somewhere in there. It's going to say what kind of request it is. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to reload this again. Rec.body. I'm pretty sure what I want is in the body. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Oh, not there. There we go, I just want to get to the end. Okay, did I save? No, so let me save. Just want to console log the request. So let's look for it, it should be popping up here, wreck that body, do, 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 do. Did I finish loading over here on this side? It did, disposing an activation, build page, compile, compile successfully. Two, 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 header sent. True, true, false, true, false. Looking for the get keyword. Because that would be what would tell us what type of request it is. And then we can create several different routes by making a switch based on that. So if we wanted to create like a, a RESTful routes. See a lot of trues and false, trues and false. Ah, here we go. Get. Okay, and so okay, so it's right there in the request object. That's its own separate thing. Okay, so it would just be we would just be doing like a request dot method. So let me do that. Let's let's do method equals rec dot method. And again, the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of give you guys ideas if you want to create your own API, what are going to be the ways to do it? Rec dot method and Let's do that, and let's see if we can display that, send that back. Method. And see if that gets us back what we expect to get back. Internal server error. Mm, doesn't like that, okay. Raw headers. That might be a little overkill. Oh, let's get back to the bottom of this. Okay. Oh, well. I don't know if that was misspelled before, but if it was, that might be the reason why. Still an internal server error. I'll just refresh just in case. Okay. So yeah. Console logging the request seems to be not something it likes to do. Res array. So let's make that array again. So I can send that in there. This refresh. Give me back my array. Hmm. Where's the mistake? Somewhere I made a mistake, man. Method is dot defined. But it is. Yeah, I'll just do this. I don't. Will it still complain? Okay, so that time it's working. So I should have my array back over here. Let's refresh. You're gonna give me back my array, yes. But I didn't console log method, so let me do that. Console dot log method. Save. Yeah, 
to show up in my console log? Not really. Okay. Well, somewhere in there we'll be able to discover kind of what method it is. Um, and let me try this again. So I am, I'm able to console log the entire request, as we saw before. If I do wreck that body again, let's try that. Uh, this keyboard. Save. Again, this experimentation is important. This is kind of how you, you learn stuff. But also at the same time, again, the idea is that one of the things people mainly do with these kind of backend frameworks is to create API microservices. So I want to make sure that we, we explore how that would be done. Okay, so I'm going to resend the request. Do, 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 do. Take a look over here. Console.log, nothing. Interesting. Okay, so this is generally how it should work. So for you to get anything out of the request, you have to do this kind of syntax. So you're going to do const, and in brackets, you're going to name all the variables you want to get out of request. And essentially what it is, you're taking requests and assigning those particular variables. So in this case, when we put method in curly brackets, it's going to look for a property called method in request and then assign it to this method variable. Cool. So let me actually just modify this, res.json, make this res array again. So basically what I have here is that if the method, basically the method is going to equal the method property from the request, if that method equals get, then it's going to give us our array. If it's not, it's going to say not working. So let's see what we get. Let's refresh. Do, 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 do. And we get our array. So that means the if statement is working. So that means that is getting the method out of the request object. And then we're able to check what the method is and then decide what it does. So you essentially could create a switch or a series of if statements to create all your RESTful routes for any particular endpoint. This is technically also how you would get your query and param. So if you might remember, so again, this sort of format, remember that because it's also how you get anything out of the request body. So if you might remember from my params, we had to do something very similar right over here. Okay. So in this case, it's from the router. Okay, that's so we had to fetch it from this router object. But the idea is that you, you just put the what you're trying to get out of it in curly brackets, and and you put the object on this side. Okay. That's an interesting way of fishing data out of an object. Not a pattern I've seen before. Um, I'm assuming it's an ES6 thing, um, but I'll take a look. I'll look it up, see what that is. Um, but that's how that would work. So basically what we learned here is just the basics of how you would create an API in Next, and again, that head tag, So, well, which is right over here. Okay, so um, yeah, with that, you could pretty much already do everything you'd want to do in Next.js. There's a lot of other cool stuff in the documentation. We'll do other videos later on, but let's see here, like other things to look forward to. Um, so I'll just flip through this. Most of the other stuff seems more for specific use cases. So as you kind of run, in, run into specific use cases, do check out this uh, documentation. But I think at this point, we'll probably move on to Gatsby. So I'll see you guys there. Have a good one.